Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 10th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Recently, we have seen a large number of attacks against unprotected Docker instances. Uh, the attack is usually just going against the Docker API on port 2375. I've talked about this before, but Remco looked a little bit deeper into this and looked at the images that are being installed via this particular attack. And what he found was a particular Docker Hub account that was used to provide these malicious images. Now, some of these images had download numbers in the 100,000 times. The particular account has been disabled by now. And it looks like the main reason that these images would be installed is this attack against the Docker API. I don't think that anybody would sort of install these images by mistake, uh, but they had somewhat sort of innocent names like, for example, Java123. Ramco is showing how he investigated uh, these malicious images. So if you're running into any suspect Docker images, uh, it shows some of the tools that you can use in order to analyze them. And you probably heard of the arrest of the Huawei CFO in Canada last week. Well, we are seeing some advanced fee scams that are trying to trick people into paying some kind of bribe in order to have her released with the suggestion that, of course, if you do so, you will be rewarded. So really just sort of a yet another variation of the Nigerian Prince style scam. You're usually asked to transfer the order of 2,000 to 5,000 US dollars to a particular bank account, which the message explains is owned by this particular corrupt prison guard who will then release Miss Meng. So far, these messages are all in Chinese, targeting Chinese destinations, either via SMS or WeChat. Well, according to Proofpoint, it looks like sextortion scams are changing tactics a little bit. Sextortion scams are those email addresses that claim that you watch some adult video and they have uh, some evidence of you doing so. Well, in the past, they basically just asked you for a ransom. Now it looks like they're trying to trick you into installing ransomware. The trick here is that they claim to provide what all the other sextortion scams didn't provide provide and that's a video sample that allegedly proves what you did. So by clicking on the link in order to preview the video sample, that's where the download then installs the ransomware. And talking about visiting random websites, well, that just got more dangerous for users of Safari. An exploit was released against a vulnerability in WebKit. And WebKit, of course, is the foundation of Safari. Last week, Apple released some security updates, but these updates do not protect against this particular vulnerability. Now, WebKit is open source and the open source version has been fixed, but of course it will take a while for this to trickle down into the actual released products. There are other browsers like, for example, Chrome that are also using parts at least of WebKit. Now, they're currently not susceptible because they're using an older version that is not susceptible to this vulnerability. It's only fairly recent versions of WebKit and not the very last public domain version that is vulnerable. Arbitrary code execution is possible via this exploit, but it is limited to whatever data Safari has access to. And Kaspersky is reporting that they found a number of implants in various bank networks. Now, these implants are typically small computers like Raspberry Pis, netbooks and the like that are being hidden in creative locations and connected to the network. 
One location Kaspersky points out are tables that have sort of a mix of different outlets and network jacks and the like. It, there's usually plenty of space underneath these tables uh, to hide these devices. And of course, these tables tend to be connected to the network. Also, if they are like in conference rooms and the like, then often these network outlets are not controlled as carefully because uh, people often bring laptops and the like into these conference room rooms in order to connect them to these networks. To set up one of these systems, of course, the attacker needs not just network, but also power and having power outlets available in these tables also makes them quite convenient. Of course, if you're keeping careful inventory on your network, then these attacks shouldn't work. Also, the, in the case of compromise that Kaspersky published have some sort of big red flag ports that are, for example, used for the command control connection, like, for example, 4444, the classic Metasploit port. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.